Welcome to the webinar, How to Implement AI in Your CPG Innovation Workflow to Maximize Outcomes. My name is Harini Venkatraman, Associate Research Director here at Lux Research, and I'll be moderating today's session. Presenting today is my colleague, Elna Shabani, Analyst here at Lux Research. Throughout the webinar, you can type any questions you have in the questions box on your screen. Time permitting, we'll answer all of them. If your question does not get answered, please do not hesitate to send an email to questions at luxresearchinc.com and we'll make sure to respond. Now, let's jump right into the presentation. Thank you, Harini. Um, hello, everyone. Today's webinar will be on implementation strategies for uh, AI in CPG and food products and how you can maximize outcome based on that. Um, you might be thinking what kind of outcome we are talking about here. Let's look at an example together. Um, so this company, Hell Energy, they developed this drink, energy drink, um, recently. And they're claiming that they used AI for different stages of their uh, development, starting from ideation to flavor selection, formulation, packaging, all the way to marketing. This is pretty exciting, but you might be thinking this is not exactly what we are, uh, you know, dealing with right now or something that we are interested in. And I must say that uh, throughout our research um, here at Lux, we haven't seen, uh, this is not the only uh, place where AI can make uh, value. There are certain areas, certain challenges, common challenges that CPG companies are facing these days that AI can be used to sort of solve some of those challenges or offer some valuable solution. And here in this webinar today, we'll be talking about some of these common challenges and how AI can help them. But most importantly, we'll offer a taxonomy of AI in different stages of uh, food or CPG products. And at the end, uh, once you are familiar with all different use cases or, or, or big taxonomy of where AI can be used, we'll offer some implementation strategy that you can craft based on your business um, uh, to be able to adopt some of these tools. Let's look at some of these common challenges and see how AI has been used for it. One of these common challenges is the new product uh, failure after launch. Statistics shows that about 75% of CPG products fail to gain uh, even $7 million revenue within their first year of launch, meaning that they failed to gain that market traction that they were planned to. Um, and a lot of time, and there are many reasons for that, but some one of, the, one of the, these reasons is the lack of initial market research. Uh, because it's a very resource intensive stage. A lot of times you talk to companies and they mention that we haven't done that much of a research, but we kind of know what kind of product we want. Uh, because CPG products are very consumer facing, it's very important that you do that initial market research to understand what's the trend or what will be the trend by the time your product is launched. And while AI may not be able to replace this whole process entirely, it offers some automated solution for you to be able to do this initial market research in a more comprehensive and more resource um, efficient way. Another challenge that we keep seeing with, uh, within CPG companies is the challenge of new product, the design of experiments for new formulations or reformulations. Sometimes these design of experiments can um, lead to up to 200, 300 different experiments. And a lot of times these designs might be biased uh, by your research team. Um, what AI can do here is that you can use your historical data based on your his previous design of experiments. And as you can imagine, CPG companies do have a lot of this data already. And using those data, you can predict the outcome of your experiments. And as a result, you can do fewer number of experiments, meaning that you can launch your product in a more efficient uh, way in a shorter amount of time. Research have shown that some 
CPG companies are implementing this one and they are seeing about 60 to 65 uh, percent efficiency in reducing the number of experiments. And the last one I wanted to highlight here, the last challenge, common challenge, which is really specific to some retail stores or, or entities that are directly uh, working with uh, consumer facing products is the inventory mismanagement. A lot of time these entities are either um, losing more money or they are leaving revenue on the table because of this mismanagement. Uh, if they can use a tool that can predict um, how to design their uh, basically inventory based on historical sales data, consumer behavior, shelf life of certain products, then they can avoid some food loss and at the end, uh, basically save money. So these are some of the common challenges. As you can see, they're not all those exciting designing product with AI. Some of very common challenges that we are seeing AI is making some impacts, is offering some solution. And I must say that right now is a very good time for you to revamp some of these uh, old fashioned strategies and, and to be able to utilize tools that are available to make things more efficient. The question right now is not whether your uh, organization need to implement AI, but the question for you should be where in, in my uh, different stages of my operation, I can use AI in a more efficient way based on my business, based on the requirements that my business have. And, uh, some of these information that you need to know before, uh, you know, in, interacting with this space is that understanding the overall use cases, knowing where exactly AI is being used and which one I want to pick based on my business is very important. Another one is to hear some success stories, to see some other peer CPG companies, how they have been implementing AI and what has been the outcome for them. And then at the end, once you gather all this research and information, um, the last step would be for you to know your implementation strategies because there are different types of strategies where, where you can implement AI in your workflow. And uh, in this uh, webinar today, um, we'll offer you all these three stages, understanding the uh, taxonomy of AI in food. And I need, need to make a note here, even though we are mentioning taxonomy of AI in food, um, it can be implemented for, for different sectors of CPG because CPG is very diverse. We decided to focus more on the food products, but you can also extend it to other uh, adjacent applications or products within CPG workflow. And um, we offer you this big taxonomy to understand the landscape and um, some of the success stories. And at the end, we'll offer you some strategies on how you can implement it based on your business needs. Let's look at this big taxonomy together. So um, the way LOX has identified opportunities within this uh, uh, space is four major areas where you can use AI for. Uh, the first one is product development, meaning that you start with the ideation stage, you need to understand your market, you go to formulation design and, and, and other stages, and the overall uh, product development, how it looks like. And there are certain use cases, as I categorize it here, that you can use AI for to make, it, make the whole process more efficient. Another big category that we are seeing a lot of momentum these days is ingredient discovery. Sometimes you might want to formulate a product, but you need a whole new uh, ingredient for your product, you do not need to, you do not want to use the traditional ingredients. And um, AI is being used to help with discovering some of these new ingredients. Once you develop your product, the, the next stage for you would be the safety and quality analysis to basically uh, evaluate if your product is meeting the expectations that you were looking for. And once you've done all of these, your product is ready to launch, uh, you need to, uh, you'll be uh, dealing a lot with supply chain and different stages of supply chain. And there are certain areas where AI can be used for. 
for the sake of today's webinar and the time that we have, we'll be focusing and talking more on these two cat first two categories, product development and ingredient discovery. But there are also certain aspects of the other two that are very important. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out after this event. Um, looking at the product development, uh, as I mentioned, there are certain use cases where um, AI can be used for. Starting from ideation stage uh, is trend spotting. This means that as a CPG company, you need to understand your consumers very well, not just to understand them right now, but to have a capability to pretend uh, to predict some of their trends and what they are looking for in near future, in one to two years. And that, that's very important the stage uh, before you launch a product. Um, and this is one area where AI is being used a lot. And specifically within this category, natural language processing is being used um, a lot. And that's uh, by basically understanding the consumer interactions on social media, the sales data or, or some recipes, basically online information to, to be able to capture uh, some insight around what's the new trend, what are consumers interested in more these days to be able to ideate on what type of product you should be launching next. Um, after you have this consumer-centric uh, basically research for understanding the, 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 the best product to work on or launch, you'll need to do formulation design. And to do that, as I mentioned, in a more efficient way, AI can help significantly uh, with, with designing the right experiments to reduce that amount of time you need for, you know, uh, the overall product launch. Um, specific to food items is sensory analysis. Once you develop your product, you want to understand how consumers are liking or disliking. Normally companies run uh, sensory panels, but this can really be automated. You can use some of your uh, previous sensory panel data to basically understand uh, consumers, uh, you know, perception of, of taste and texture and sensory properties of your product. Um, so, so this is one other area that AI can be used. And lastly is process optimization. This, this has been a more niche area. There hasn't been too many use cases, but um, we expect that AI can uh, progress more in that direction in the future. And this is basically on understanding your process and your equipment to optimize it for a better, you know, output outcome by uh, basically modifying some of the factors. Right now, this is being used a lot for uh, synthetic biology, precision fermentation, to do a more efficient strain engineering or downstream processing um, in a more efficient way. Here we have a market map of different startup companies that are offering solutions for product development. One that I want to highlight here is uh, food pairing. Um, food pairing is a company that basically digitizes products to understand their flavor profiles. They digitize this uh, flavor profile and based on that flavor profile and a digital twin model that is a kind of a digital consumers, um, they can um, design formulations in a more efficient way. To better understand food pairings business and how it can have implications for, for different CPG product applications, we can look at this one case study together where um, Kellogg was looking to develop a new um, flavor uh, for its Pringle product, Pringles product, and uh, they were looking for a flavor that can match well with beverages. So instead of doing that in the more conventional way of design of experiments, they decided to partner up with Food Pairing and use Food Pairing's uh, platform. Uh, with that platform, they identified a million different flavor combinations. And you can imagine if you want to try all of those million combinations to reach to that one desired, you know, flavor, it will, be, it will take forever. But uh, Food Pairing's platform used a digital twin model uh, where it basically tastes um, this formulation and can down select for you. So it down selected to three 
flavors ultimately and uh, Clock was able to launch its product, a flavor that matches very well with beer beverages. And the overall outcome was that they were able to do this whole process uh, in a more efficient way in a shorter amount of time that they normally do. Um, and this can have implications with for, for other areas. Um, as you can see, there are a number of CPG companies that are currently working with food pairing for similar applications. Another big category within that big taxonomy, if you remember, eh, that we wanted to talk today about is basically ingredient discovery. Ingredient discovery has two different, can have two different uh, use cases. One could relate to bio, bioactive health ingredients, uh, meaning that you can derive uh, these bioactive ingredients from plant sources, natural sources that are not yet identified. There might be plants uh, containing these bioactive ingredients, but you have no idea about it yet. And uh, there are some companies offering their AI solutions for relating some metabolomic genomic data to these plant sources to identify those bioactive ingredients that are completely unknown at the moment. Um, and you can imagine if you want to do it like manually, it's almost impossible to discover, um, to run through all of those data and, and different species of plants to be able to discover new ingredients. Another category within this category is uh, alternative ingredient discovery. And this really relates to uh, alternative plant-based um, ingredients. Uh, basically, if I can explain this through a, a very great example, what Notco as a startup company within this space is doing. They wanted to design a plant-based milk that resembles a lot like a, an, an animal-based milk. And uh, their platform identified um, cabbage, a combination of cabbage um, with another ingredient that can help with, with that flavor design. This, those are some, you know, uh, not very common ingredients that you might want to add to your milk product, but at the end, when they combine together, they can reach that desired uh, flavor and sensory properties. So the, the way you combine these plant-based ingredients to reach that property is, is something that some of these startup companies are working on right now. <clears throat> One company I wanted to highlight within this category is Nuritas. Uh, what they do is they basically work on the bioactive health discovery and they use AI coupled with genomic data to basically predict the occurrence of uh, bioactive uh, peptides in, in natural food items and plant sources. Um, great example of their work is this case study where they partnered with BASF. BASF was looking to launch a new sport uh, nutrition product, and for that they were looking to include a completely new bioactive health ingredients with some anti-inflammatory pro properties. They did not want to use the common ingredients because they were looking for certain properties, and they decided to partner up with Nuritas they used their platform and the platform identified uh, some new uh, bioactive ingredient from uh, basically rice. And uh, they were able to launch this product in a very uh, expedited manner in just only two years, which the company claim is one of the fastest product launch uh, by using AI for, for discovering the bioactive. Um, Moving from that, Nuritas has worked with a number of other companies specifically for discovering these ingredients to help them with, you know, designing more in innovative products or products that with, with certain um, health, you know, implications that companies are looking for, basically. Um, considering all these different areas of, um, you know, um, uh, different stages AI can be used in our big taxonomy. We already spoke with two and uh, considering all those four areas, you can see that AI can touch upon different stages of product development. It's not just very niche or specific areas. And the good question right now might be that how you can implement these um, 
AI use cases in, in your organization? What are the requirements? What you need, you need to do right now? And um, we can look at some of these implementation strategies in this section. So basically, depending on different factors and criteria, which we'll be talking about soon, you'll have three different approaches. You either need to partner up with some companies as we uh, show you on, uh, in a couple of cases studies. You can basically partner up with external uh, startup companies or external entities offering these AI solutions, or you can develop these AI capabilities within your organizations, within your workflow, or depending on the application area, you might need to take a mixed approach of developing in-house, but at the same time doing some external partnerships. Let's look at these uh, criteria together uh, uh, based on those criteria. Basically, you can um, implement either of these strategies, starting from uh, external partnerships these are some of the criteria you need to consider. You need to sit at your organization with your team members to decide if any of these criteria uh, is true uh, for your organization at the moment. Then outsourcing or partnership with external partners might be the right implementation strategy for you. The first criteria would be if the target product that you want to use AI for, for example, Clark's case, they wanted to use AI specifically for a new Pringle flavor, you might have a different product in mind. If that one is kind of out of the scope um, of your company's focus area, for example, BASF case is, is, is a great example. Um, in that case, Partnering with external, uh, you know, companies might be the best strategy for you because you do not want to invest a lot on an area that is not your core expertise, and is very niche. Um, another one would be that maybe your company is a a, a medium-sized CPG company and you currently do not have enough resource or infrastructure uh, for implementing implementing AI. Because one important thing to keep in mind is that. In order to be able to use any of these AI use cases, you really need to have done a great data strategy within your organization. And that means that you need to start restructuring the way you're gathering data. Uh, for example, if you want to use your experimental data, you need to gather your experiments data in a format that is different from uh, traditional ones like Excel, so that you can use those uh, uh, data to develop your AI models. That strategy sometimes take up to five years. So if you feel like you do not have that bandwidth within your organization at the moment, then um, partnership might be a great strategy for you. And lastly is the, uh, basically, if you are just entering this space, you want to see how AI can create value for you, uh, partnership to see how things go might be a good strategy at the beginning while you are developing some of your in-house capabilities. Um, an example in this one is uh, Bell Group, that famous uh, brand behind some of the interesting uh, cheese products like Laughing Cow. Uh, at some point, they were interested to, des to design the plant-based version of some of these popular cheese, one cheese products, and they did not want to risk because uh, products are already very popular and the plant-based version has to have that you know, specific uh, uh, sensorial properties. So in order to do that, they decided to partner up with a um, basically AI company, Climax, um, that uses their AI platform for identifying the right plant-based ingredients to design the uh, perfect plant-based product. Your other implementation strategy here would be developing in-house capabilities. And let's look at why you want to pursue this one. Um, the first thing would be if the product you want to use AI for is the core IP of your organization, then um, and you, because partnering, partnering with a startup company, you need to share some of your IP, you need to share some of your formulation, and that this is not something you can do with all of your products. If that's the case, then you need to have in-house capabilities. 
Um, another one could be that you just want to have more versatility. You want to develop AI so that you can use it for other, your other products or other aspects of your organization. And lastly would be that um, you just want to do the company-wide, you know, um, restructuring, reorganization of your uh, the way you are collecting your data, because even if the AI use cases right now is not something that might add value to your organization, as this space is evolving very fast, in two to three years, you might find yourself that your organization to stay competitive really needs uh, to implement AI. And you want to use that ahead of time, um, that restructuring of, of, of basically data collection. A great example is Unilever. You can see that they do have AI across different uh, sectors of their operations, business operation, all the way to formulation and reformulation design. And lastly would be a mixed approach where depending on the application area, you might need to basically consider both um, strategies. And here is a very great example, actually, Givadon. They do have, they started their data strategy uh, basically back in 2019 by establishing their first digital factory in France. And uh, since then, they have completed a number of AI, uh, you know, projects, including a trend spotting platform that they have in-house. But most recently, they decided to do an external partnership with Nuritas for uh, some novel ingredient discovery, because this is one area that requires a lot of, you know, a specific, a specialized knowledge around genomic and metabolomic data. And you may not want to invest that much in-house because that's not the core, you know, business expertise for you. So implement, so external partnership for them was the best strategy in that case. And you might find yourself in such situations and Givadon's strategy might be a great example for, for your uh, basically uh, business. So overall, the key takeaways here is that AI ha has shown that it can have a lot of uh, potential with um, basically shortening the product development uh, time and basically making things more efficient. This is the area that we're seeing most, you know, outcome from compared to other areas. But you need to keep in mind that data strategy is very important. And sometimes you need to invest for five years to just restructuring your data strategy before you're able to see any ROI. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. The next one, as I mentioned, data is very important. You need to make sure that you have, uh, you need to make sure of your data quality as well as quantity. You need to have a large number of data, but those data need to be of quality to be able to develop a very reliable AI tools. Otherwise, um, making sure that your AI tool or, or prediction is reliable can be really difficult to understand. This is one area that, that, that there is still some challenges around utilizing AI. Making sure that the outcome is reliable enough uh, is, is a big challenge. So right now, all you can do is to um, gather high quality and quantity of data for your AI models. And lastly would be that um, you need to have bespoke models for each application area. If some parameters changes, for example, you change um, your ingredient supplier or your equipment are upgraded, then that AI model may not be suitable anymore. And you need to train your model based on new data. So this is very important to keep in mind. And uh, overall, that um, concludes our webinar today. And thank you for, for listening. Thank you so much, Alnas. A very insightful presentation there. I will now be taking questions on the presentations, so please make sure you can type those uh, in the questions box. If you do not get to your question on this call, somebody from Lux Research will definitely be in touch after the webinar. Yes, we are trying to see here, getting a lot of questions. It's definitely a hot topic. Um, so the first one that I see is around the data strategy that you brought up, Elnaz. How does it actually work? And when you think about corporates, how can they benefit from their data strategy in the long run? I know you touched a little bit upon that during your takeaways, but maybe uh, you know an example would be great there. Yes, absolutely. So as I mentioned, data strategy is going to be the first thing that 
uh, large organizations need to have to be able to implement these AI tools. You cannot always rely on external partnership. And even, even if you do external partnership, uh, still data is very important because you need to provide some formulation data to, to startup companies to be able to uh, work together to develop a model that works best for your uh, you know requirements. So as you can see, this is the first stage you need to have uh, in your organization. And I must say that um, one big challenge or, I, uh, or the dynamic around that would be if you are a big organization, if you are a big corporate, um, and you have different sectors working across the world, uh, making this connection, how you implement strategy across your different sectors would be a very big challenge. And uh, one strategy you, need, you can take in these cases is that just starting from your core you know, data, core products or core um, expertise, like where your business is more focused on. And then starting from that, you can go section by section. Instead of having all section restructuring the data uh, collection or data strategy method, you can go one by one based on uh, requirements or based on uh, where you are seeing the most value or is the, uh, the core focus for your organization. In the long run, uh, as I mentioned, um, because um, right now I would say compared to some adjacent industries like uh, compared to biotech or biopharma world, uh, you may not see that much of advancement in terms of how AI is being used. Um, and I expect that in the next few years, there are going to be a lot more advanced application areas uh, for the implementation of AI. And um, even if you are not right now seeing the value, depending on the requirements of your business, uh, having done this implementation, this data strategy ahead of time, starting right now, would give you that ability uh, to be able to um, quickly implement these AI tools uh, in the next uh, couple of years. And one thing that is very special about AI tools is that once you have your data strategy, your your um, you know uh, correct formats, um, and you have done this structuring, developing these models do not take that long. And they're very quick to develop. You just need to have the infrastructure right in time. Absolutely. I think you brought up some great points there. I think the next question I'm seeing is kind of connected to what you brought up. You know, you have the data strategy, but then the use cases, right? You brought several use cases in your presentation. Within the food and CPG sector, where do you think that AI is being most used currently and how is that going to change? Yes, I, I know that um, we categorize uh, different sections. Some of them are more potential use cases or, or, or there are not too many uh, you know, application areas yet. Uh, even though they will progress more perhaps in the future, they have the great potential, but right now there are certain areas there you're seeing the most, you know, applications based on the capabilities of the, the today's AI models or the capabilities that companies can gather their data or the application areas that is making much more sense for them. Uh, a lot of it is on formulation design and basically being able to design your experiments in a more efficient way and in a more unbiased way, because a lot of time in your R&D, you will need to depend on humans, on like scientists in your team to design those experiments for you. But just having a more systematic, automated way to, to do that experiment design, experimental design for you, would be something that, that many companies, something that many companies are looking after right now, and we're seeing a lot of uh, momentum around. That's one area that, that a lot of applications are happening right now. And another one would be ingredient discovery, because um, AI can offer some, you know, can empower some human uh, humans um, uh, ability in, in discovering those ingredients and running all those different uh, experiments manually would be very, you know, um, very hard to do. So um, these two uh, use cases, I'm seeing a lot of CPGs are interacting with and a lot of applications in. Awesome. I know we are pretty much at the end of our time here, uh, but there are more questions and I'm 
sure that uh, somebody from Lux Research will be following up and answering some of those questions. Uh, so thank you so much, Elnaz, once again, for that great presentation and discussion. And that concludes our webinar for today. The slide presentation and the recording from this webinar will be sent to all the attendees via email. After leaving the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a survey on today's presentation. We really appreciate any feedback that can help inform us and improve our future webinars. Again, uh, take a look at some of our upcoming webinars. Thank you so much for joining us today and hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.